Welcome to Dead Man Talking. Before I begin, I'd like to say a huge thank you to everybody that's uh, liked, shared and commented on my videos. And I have to say I'm overwhelmed with the response that I've had over the last few days. Um, it's really, really encouraging. Uh, it's just what I hoped for. I just want to keep building this channel and I can only do that with your help. So please do keep like, sharing and commenting. Uh, we've got some great stuff in the pipeline for the next few months. Tonight's show is simply entitled... There is a lot more than Bigfoot lurking in the wilderness. And this is a three part series. And uh, I'll post the next part tonight as well. Enjoy. Before I begin, I think it would be both necessary and appropriate to give a bit of background information on myself. I am a 34 year old woman who has been working in the wilderness since I was 18 and who spent my childhood growing up basically off of the grid with my family in the middle of the woods. My father owned a logging company in Oregon, and my mother was a very outdoorsy woman who enjoyed the quiet and solitude of living 30 plus miles away from the closest town. Although I have plenty of stories of strange experiences from my childhood, I am going to share some of the things that I have encountered more recently during my 16 year and counting career. I have worked all over the United States with pretty much every branch of government that oversees federally owned land, the National Park Service, US Forest Service, Bureau of Land Management, etc. Though most of my time has been spent in the western half of the US, in all of my positions I have worked, I have spent a majority of my time outside in the wilderness, often neither alone or with a small group of co-workers. For discretion purposes, I won't disclose my exact current job title, but my job duties basically include wilderness surveying, trail maintenance, wildlife management, and aiding in search and rescue. I do consider myself a rational, level-headed person, and I don't scare easily. I have always been the type of person to figure out a scientific explanation for everything. However, Sometimes, especially when you are out in the wilderness, there are things you see and experience that seem to defy all logical explanation. These are the stories I will be sharing with you. This first story comes from the f my first summer on the job with the National Park Service, MPS. When I turned 18, now, some of you may know how insanely competitive it is to get a job with the MPS. But my resume was chock full of relevant, relevant experience I gained while growing up. So I was one of the few lucky ones who got a job with them right out of high school. The job I landed was at a historic site in rural northern New Mexico. That is important for its Native American heritage. It was an entry level labour and maintenance job. And I was going to be doing a lot of grunt work. But I was excited as hell for the opportunity nonetheless. The beginning of the summer went pretty uneventfully. I got to know all my co-workers, heard all the classic scare the rookie stories they tell us newbies, especially ones new to the region as I was, and learned everything there was to know about the local legends and cultures of past and present. As the summer went on, I was assigned more and more tasks due, due to the usual wear and tear that comes with the height of tourist season the days were long and the desert sun is strong. So as the summer progressed and my boss began to trust me more, I'd often wait until the sun was beginning to set to do my hardest tasks. That would require the most time outside in the desert heat. And I would often work well into the night. But I liked it better that way. Aside from dodging the sun, it was nice to work outside when the park was quiet and void of tourists. Early afternoon one day, about mid-August, we had a few hikers come into the office to report that the previous night's monsoon had caused a creek to swell up and the rushing water had done some minor damage to one of the small bridges the park had built to cross the creek. Luckily, the hikers had taken pictures of the damage, so I didn't have to hike all the way out to the bridge just to assess it, which was about seven miles down the trail from the parking lot. My own boss put me on the job and sent me into town to get the materials I would need to fix the bridge and by the time I returned it was already late afternoon. My boss gave me the go ahead to work into the evening instead of waiting until the next morning to begin and since it was beautiful 
and a clear day, I decided to bring along my tent and camp out there overnight under the stars. By the time I had hiked all the way out to the bridge, the sun was setting. Even though it was a seven mile hike, it was all relatively flat, so it went by quickly. The spot where the bridge was at was about three quarters of a mile into where the trail enters the base, some breathtaking canyons. canyons. I chose a spot that was slightly elevated from the creek to set up my tent, just in case it was to swell again for some unexpected rains overnight, even though the sky was still crystal clear. Once my tent was set up, I made a small fire and decided to cook dinner before getting started on the bridge. While I cooked and ate, the last bit of sunlight dipped below the horizon, and the canyon lit up from the glow of my fire. It truly was beautiful night. It truly was a beautiful night, and the moon was almost full, so there was plenty of light for me to work by. As I began working on the bridge, I noticed how beautifully the light from the campfire behind me was dancing and making shapes on the canyon walls across the creek. And I laughed briefly at how distorted my silhouette was being projected onto these walls. I started hammering away, and for a while everything was going normally. However, after about 20 minutes, I got an uneasy feeling like I was being watched. I stopped for a minute and stood up. I took a look around, but I knew I was completely alone in that portion of the canyon, so I just shook it off and shook off all the uneasiness and kept working. To get my mind off it, I began to hum a little tune that I was pretty much just making up as I went along, and before I knew it, the hammering and the humming had replaced any fearful thoughts that were in my mind. 30 or so minutes later, the feeling like I was being watched returned, although this time it was much, much stronger. I was due for a break anyway, so I decided to stop working for a bit and return to my campsite to make myself some hot tea. As soon as I stopped hammering, I noticed the canyon fell silent, and I mean completely silent. There was no sound of bugs, no wind, no anything. The only thing I could hear was the crackling of my campfire and the sound of my own breath and heartbeat. I stood up and right as I was about to turn to walk back to my campsite, I looked at the canyon wall across the creek in front of me and I noticed the silhouette of a second figure being projected next to mine. I immediately swung around and looked behind me to see who was there but saw nothing. I turned back around and this time saw only my silhouette figure again and so I breathed a sigh of relief. I figured it must have been my mind playing tricks on me. As I walked back to my tent, I noticed that the usual night noises had returned and I breathed a huge sigh of relief. It's all in your head, Kate, I assured myself. When I got back to my tent, I decided that I would just finish up working in the morning and I climbed into my sleeping bag and zipped up the tent to keep out any bugs. The fire was getting low and I figured I would just leave it burning overnight so it would be easier to put out in the morning. I fell asleep almost immediately, as I usually do most nights. A few hours later though, I woke up suddenly, which was unusual since I am usually a very heavy sleeper. I opened my eyes and the first thing I noticed was that once again everything was completely silent, except for one thing. I heard a faint humming coming from close by outside my tent. It was the tune I had been humming to myself earlier as I worked. I turned my head to look towards the side of my tent where the humming was coming from and through my tent I could see the silhouette of a person sitting by the fire. I immediately froze with fear. I couldn't turn away. I watched the silhouette for a second and suddenly I saw the head turn towards my tent and look to my direction. As the figure turned the humming got intensively loud and it sounded like the humming was coming from inside my own head. And suddenly, the entire campfire went completely out. At that moment, my flight or fight response kicked in, coupled with adrenaline from the fear, and I stood up. I threw my tent from the ground up over my head and bolted. I don't think I have ever run that fast in my entire life. I did not turn around even once to look behind me. I could hear the humming following right behind me until I reached the edge of the canyon the trail broke out into the open. And as soon as I exited the canyon, the humming stopped. I didn't stop running until I reached the parking lot at the trailhead. And luckily, 
my car keys were in the pockets of the jackets I was wearing. I got my car and drove off and left a message for my boss that someone else would have to finish the project the next day. I made my co-worker bring my tent back for me and when I got it back it had been slashed up like someone had taken a knife to it. He asked me what happened but I couldn't bring myself to tell him the truth so I just said it must have been an animal. Needless to say I never returned to that canyon and I passed up all future projects that involved that area of the park. That's all for this story but I'll try to update every few days with another one when I'm in town and have Wi-Fi again. And there we go folks that's part one. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I can assure you it gets a lot more intense in part two. Don't forget once again like share comment subscribe i hope you enjoyed the uh, show tonight stay tuned for more and remember folks be safe not sorry <laughs>